You are listening to the Mary Jane Society podcast, where you will meet entrepreneurs, cultivators, scientists, doctors, and inventors in the cannabis industry. I'm your host, Pam Schmiel, marketer and publicist in the cannabis industry. Today, our guest is Israel Gasprin. He's the CEO of Zentrella, a Canadian scientific research company using EEG and AI technology to measure the brain waves of a cannabis user as a way to understand the impact of cannabis on the brain and how it alters a person's mood. Brands are using this technology to provide scientifically backed evidence on how specific cannabinoids and terpenes can affect a person by using their products. It's a game changer for breeders and product developers looking to provide a particular effect to their consumers. The technology is groundbreaking. Let's welcome Israel. An overview of Centrella and your role, how you started it, what is your background? Just let's start with that and then we can jump into the questions. (laughs) Yeah, sure, Pam. So uh, I, I founded the company about 10 years ago. Uh, the whole vision of uh, founding Centrella was to apply artificial intelligence to EEG data or electroencephalograms in order to uh, objectively and uh, in a for- more affordable way analyze brain activity to objectively quantify the effects of cannabis or any other you know, impact of uh, health or wellness products. So that was the, the 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 vision of the company about 10 years ago. It was very pioneering because back today is very popular AI, but 10 years ago, it was a very uh, kind of new concept that the application of her, like just thinking that AI could do the analysis that a neuroscientist or neurologist do, it was very um, disturbing for people. And, and as pioneers in, in this field and founder of the company, I was aware that, uh, you know, of that challenge. So anyways, uh, in 2016, we started to, uh, to conduct human trials just to provide a little bit of feedback or, or context here. The, the, the way AI works is with, you know, large data sets, large, you know, sets of information that are accurate and reliable to, you know, to use for training these AI solutions. So in 2016, my business partner, uh, Dr. Dan Bosniak, the neuroscientist, the uh, at McMaster University, uh, he and I started conducting these uh, type of uh, human trials in order to build banks of EEG data associated with cannabis effects. So first we were doing all of that analysis and, and human research manually to then train the first AI solutions. And, then, and by 2018, uh, um, the, the, the first AI solution was developed to uh, quantify how uh, strong was the psychoactive experience of, that a person was you know, having after ingesting a cannabis product. And um, in 2018, uh, thanks to the support of the Ontario Brain Institute and uh, the Ontario Center of Innovation, the, you know, uh, governmental organizations of the Ontario pre- province, they um, uh, we raised one million dollars to complete the development of the technology, and uh, and uh, we, you know with that uh, kind of support, we were able to independently and scientifically prove what was the capability of our AI to do the EEG analysis uh, uh, in a fully objective way, standardized, and and that as a result of that, we were able to know what was the actual state of an individual after trying cannabis. Uh, All of these, it's another kind of important point to share as part of the founding story, is that the government funded us to build these for law enforcement. They wanted to improve the investigation process of cannabis impaired driving. And while everyone was proposing advanced body fluid tests like saliva tests, urine tests, or breathalyzers, we just presented to the government this concept of saying, why don't we scan the brain of uh, you know, cannabis consumers? 
because here is the problem. The problem is not determining impairment. You are doing that today, regardless of the actual uh, state of individuals. As soon as you identify that they have THC in their body fluids, you will, we are making the assumption that they are impaired and you are not taking any risk in letting them dry because, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is it is believed that you may be impaired. So the problem here is false accusations of impairment mm -hmm. because of THC residues in the system. But what if you combine a quick EEG scan at police stations so you can objectively do this screen test to determine if they are actually experiencing acute cannabis psychoactive effects and therefore you continue with your investigation or not and let people go because in 2018 well we were in 2018 now that cannabis is legal here in canada it is pretty much unfair to accuse people of being intoxicated while driving when they may just have THC residues Long story short, they funded us. We contracted a clinical research organization and we said, we will train your clinicians or research assistants to use the Cognalyzer in your, in your clinic. And you will collect EEG data from, I think, 75 uh, study subjects, and you will blind the data. And we will use our AI to do all of these analysis and the result of that, I, I, I don't know if I share with you, but if not, I will share the peer-reviewed publications that resulted from that the study that we uh, achieved unprecedented accuracy. We proved that if you pair this EEG analysis with saliva analysis, you can reduce up to 50% false or inaccurate uh, determinations uh, about whether you are impaired or not. And, and in 2021, when we published these papers, we also raised a, a little bit of funds from private investors and angel investors, and 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 we started commercializing, commercializing the, the technology. Now, at that point, we realized that the, the Canadian government, or specifically the Ontario government, was not going to adopt the technology for safety and law enforcement. So we were wondering, Mm -hmm. Who else could be interested in this type of technology? And then I started to connect and get involved into the cannabis industry. And I met one of the pioneering, uh, one of the pioneers of the medical cannabis industry in cannabis. His name is Alex Revich. I don't know if you have heard about him, but if I... not. Oh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I would love a, a Canadian uh Yes, he is Canadian, and he he is one of the pioneers of the cannabis industry. <laughs> anyway, so so I reached out to him, and I was like, "Hey, you know, uh, my name is Israel. I build this technology with my team, and uh, we wanted to use it for this purpose. But uh, we would love to learn more about other potential applications in the market." And he was like, "Oh my God, like." You know, there is a big issue right now in the product innovation space because many companies like us, back in that time, he was representing one of the largest uh, licensed producers in, in cannabis, of cannabis. He was telling me about this, you know, heavy investment that they were doing in advanced drug delivery methods high you know advanced extraction methods and investing in coming up with unique formulations mixing cannabinoids with other ingredients in order to create unique experiences and he was telling me but the problem is that we don't know how to objectively prove it there is nothing on one side you have questionnaires which is you know very subjective and prone to be biased and on the other side you have a the typical body fluid test, blood, saliva, urine, or breath analyzers, but that that doesn't really measure the impact of cannabis on the brain, what what consumers are experiencing and feeling, etc. And and then the the other issue he was telling me is, even if we use these research tools, the only avenue we have to conduct research is through the clinical research framework, which is stupidly expensive and slow 
And it makes total sense for therapeutic research. But what about all of these, you know, recreational space that delivers wellness effects, wellness benefits? It's not about, you know, clinical and therapeutic. So at that time, I was telling, telling Alex, well, Alex, what if we Centrella set up our own research lab in order to conduct non-therapeutic cannabis effect research? We will take care of all the research and and we will for us it's very important to continue also to also continue doing research because we will continue growing our databases of EEG data associated with all of these mental states that allows us to continue developing more AI solutions. So in that way, we conduct the conduct the research. We fully own the intellectual property, but we give you the results, which is what it matters to you as a licensed producer. And this information, you can use it to comply with the Cannabis Act and its regulations in order to use it for educational and promotional purposes. So he loved it. And since 2021, that's how we started conducting research. And, and that's, the, that's our unique offering to the industry, non-therapeutic cannabis effect research. We can do the CRO model here in Canada. So you know, we, we do the research from end to end or the most disruptive offering that we have right now in the market is replicating, replicating and implementing this research model in cannabis labs or research hospitals or universities or CROs you know, globally. And we have been doing that, for example, in the States with, with uh, PACS in San Francisco. And we have been working with other uh, you know, licensed producers as well in Colorado and I think Massachusetts, Arizona, et cetera, among some uh, other licensed producers here in Canada. But I'll stop right there as a kind of a... Most of the uh, cannabinoid receptors are located in uh, the brain. So, uh, you know, that we know, I guess, right? So that's that's a huge area to be looking at and how it's being affected. Um, so absolutely, Pam. And 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 I and our vision at Centrella and and uh, is, is uh, our vision is to quantify mental states. For example, being high, that is a specific mental state. And I think that maybe, you know, through our kind of conversations uh, via email, one of your points or questions was about, a, you know, the variability, human variability about all of these cannabis effects. So when we understood that there are universal mental states, feeling happy is universal, feeling sad or depressed or anxious or feeling high is, is these are universal mental states. And those are the, the specific um, yeah, cognitive or emotional or psychoactive states that we are detecting with AI through EEG analysis. And what this means is that now through these human trials that we have, uh, this research model that we have created, now we can objectively quantify all of these states. If you are high, how high? If you are feeling relaxed, how relaxed? If you're feeling energized, how energized, et cetera. And then this is allowing us now to break down the data by certain human factors, for example, gender, and then see how, for example, CBD is, how females, for example, are reacting to CBD versus males or gender or their BMI, et cetera. Yeah. And it's opening, it's generating, I believe, uh, unique insights that either confirm or are brand new that are allowing product developers or researchers to better understand how we are reacting to uh, cannabis or specific formulations. And based on that, you know, benefit uh, in terms of how they will position the products and educate retailers or health practitioners about how to recommend the consumption or the right dosage of a product, et cetera. So we always thought that monitoring the brain was the, you know, the root of overcoming this challenge 
better understanding how consumers feel after trying cannabis. Right. You can't really test somebody's um, level of happiness, sadness, or anxiety through blood tests and things like that. It has to be through through brainwaves. So, so, so you could see in someone's brainwave uh, data if they are reacting happy, anxious. I mean, is that what you're reading on these these reports? These yeah. Things? So, so uh, uh, there is a roadmap to complete the development of these AI solutions. We, our vision is to have completed more than t- probably 15 or 20 mental states within the next six years. Right now, the AI solution is able to objectively quantify psychoactive effects. So if you are feeling the high, we can quantify the high and uh, relaxation and energy effects. So imagine that- And the what effects? A, a, pardon me? Uh, what was the last thing you said? Uh, relaxation and energy effects. Energy, okay. So we are able to quantify what is the relaxation state of individuals. And then uh, 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 based on this research model that we have created, now we can objectively determine and quantify if a specific strain or a specific formulation is really increasing that relaxation state or is decreasing it because it's making you feel energized. It, it's, I believe that this is the new way of saying this is an indica or sativa. It, 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 it's oh, a- oh, you've, oh, well, that was going to be my next question is, there are so many different strains coming out, you know, so many breeders out there. Um, where, like, where, how are you, then how are you um, tying your research to a specific strain or, or is this just basic or are you trying to, are you trying to identify a sativa versus an indica, but those don't really, aren't really here right. anymore more because of exactly. all the overbreeding so how exactly. it's a great question pam and and everything comes down to research applications how how the industry is adopting this wearable eeg device to conduct their own research or or we when we do it and it has been so exciting to see two two main applications of it cultivators are using it to benchmark the efficacy of multiple different and new strains to determine what is the actual, for example, what is the actual psychoactive potency of those strains? Because we know that there is a huge problem with the percentage of concentration of THC. Many are, you know, it's an inaccurate and unreliable way of determining that. And also we know that the the potency or the strain of a psychoactive effects will also be determined uh, how you combine THC with other terpenes and cannabinoids, etc. I am. That's what I was the most excited to talk about because you know there's there's I I don't I'm sure you know of um the United States uh, neuroscientist um Dr. Ethan Ruin, Russo. Oh, yes, he's right. Of course, he's he's a big proponent of of trying to prove how uh, terpenes uh, really affect us um, in, in, in the entourage effect. So I guess that's what you're you're proving. You're breaking all this down. Oh, so that's how you're breaking down the strains. Like, okay, if it has yeah. this, if it has a lot of mercine in it, this is how most people act, but you can't make a blanket statement. Like this is how everybody reacts to it. So, because exactly. everybody's so individual, so how exactly. does that... so there are, there are two ways of conducting this type of research pam uh, do you want to benchmark products or do you want to or or do you want to accurately characterize what a specific consumer profile uh, experiences so in the first model it's not about the consumer specifically it's about benchmarking the efficacy of, of strains or unique formulations. So through this standardized protocol, which by the way has been approved by Health Canada, which was a game changing aspect for us and independent ethics research boards. So now it's replicable and all of that is supporting the research and the science. Anyways, what, what cultivators and formulators are doing is to say, okay, I have a strain one, a strain two, 
these are my top five strains. I want to benchmark them. So I am going to use the same study subjects and they will try the five strains in different days. So the only variable is the strain and the same human variability is applied to everything. So, so you know that the, the only thing that is changing is the product, or the, that is the main change, you know, the, the main change in these controlled scientific scenarios. And that's how they are benchmarking, you know, products. And then with the statistical analysis that we do for them, we prove how reliable are those changes. So we just, uh, as, uh, to give you two examples that are very exciting, we have a client that is doing is been my benchmarking a uh, different strains and and uh, with this type of evidence he is proving why some of their strains are the the top sellers because it's proving that they are very strong at creating psychoactive effects but also he strategically selected other strains that are not performing well and the, the the strain of the psychoactive experience is considerably or significantly lower than the other ones. So with this type of evidence, he is going to prepare all of this evidence to launch. Well, we will publish a scientific paper. And based on this evidence, he will communicate it to consumers and retailers and maybe health professionals, depending on the type of cannabis. Uh, about you know the efficacy of these strains to create psychoactive effects. So that is one. The other one that is very exciting, it's a company that developed a very advanced uh, CBD gummy infused with terpenes. And these gummies have 50 milligrams of CBD plus terpenes, which I don't uh, I don't remember, but this paper is publicly available in our website. So I'll share with you the link if you want to uh, kind of uh, take a look at it or share it with your audience. And he was he was asking us, I want you to benchmark my product versus another product that has the exact same amount of CBD, but it doesn't have terpenes. And we were like, perfect. So under these controlled human trials, we invited 15 study subjects to try both products in visit one and visit two at the same time of the day, same environment, mm -hmm. etc. And we use our AI-based EEG analysis to quantify the relaxation effects of these two products. Well, it was it was astonishing to see that CBD plus terpenes, that specific formulation, was three times more potent than the other one. And it's not anymore me saying it, the client, is this standardized and proven AI analysis that it was exactly, you know, it was applied to both products fully objectively in the exact same way. And there was a sig significantly different, uh, you know, performance on both products. And then the final point uh, that I just wanted to share with you, Pam, is then, the, then this, this brand was asking us about breaking down the data by gender because he knew that his main target audience are women. So we broke down the data uh, between, you know, by genders. And it was uh, striking to see how females react better to CBD than males. And the, for me, the big opportunity here is to, is to come up with more accurate recommendations of dosing or consumption. Because mm -hmm. with, what this means is that one gummy for females seems to be the ideal amount in order to create that you know, desired effect of feeling relaxed. But for males, they have to maybe double the amount because it was not enough in order to get the same performance or sensitivity than than women obtain. So I think that this will this will completely transform how we think about the consumption of cannabis and and Gender. how to accomplish exactly how to accomplish these benefits, wellness or therapeutic, depending on who you are down the road. Wow, that's have you have you tested just terpenes alone without we haven't yet we haven't because yet. that's a big question 
we know it's important in the entourage effect, but like, how about just the terpenes alone? We need to, we need to validate that measurement, right? So that, that I think that's super important. About the, the current capabilities of the AI solution. So right now it quantifies the psychoactive effect, the strength of cannabis specifically, uh, but then the relaxation and energy and the other ones that is co that are coming is about quantifying uh, anxiety and depression or sadness. And I think that this one also will be game changing for all of these wellness and potentially therapeutic products that are helping people to reduce anxiety and sadness. Uh, yeah. So, if oh, we with the psychedelics, yeah. Yeah, if we are able now to objectively quantify these emotional states, and now we can conduct this type of trials to, to demonstrate how effective all of these psychedelic therapies or medicine or wellness products are really reducing those negative mental states. So we can help these companies to help consumers and the open market to know how, how, how the solutions are, you know, really adding value to them and helping them to cope or deal or manage this, uh, you know, uh, uh, daily, daily life uh, issues or mental health issues, yes. etc. So, and 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 how are you, are you working? How closely are you working with the medical community? I know you mentioned Alex Revick before. Um, like, meaning, are you working with any doctors or scientists on, um, you know, sharing any, or, you know, sharing any information or giving them information? And wh why I also think. This will be really important, of course, is I interviewed um, a, a medical uh, scientific researcher um, out of Israel, and he is um, doing drug development discovery for cancer, uh, cancer research, and actually put a formulation into the market recently in Israel to start there. And he is based, his formulations are based on specific strains. So they, so they grow, he works with cultivators in Israel to grow specific strains that they, they know these cannabinoids and these specific terpenes work together to somehow, uh, work on say breast cancer, a specific down to a specific breast cancer, of course, um, and that's one of the areas that he's he's working in. And it, it has to be, so they painstakingly try all different cannabinoids, a specific strain, you know, on this cancer to see how, how it works. And then he finally finds a specific strain. So they, he has to have breeders, you know, cultivators grow for his, his formulation. So if you're able to identify the effects of, of a strain, all those effects in there, that's going to some ripple into the medical community and help them. Totally. I, I have to send you this article also about this, this doctor. Please, please it do, Pam. It was Pamela. so interesting. <laughs> Absolutely, Pam. Specific strains. Yeah, Pam. So, so it's a, it's a, it's a, I love the question because we, we are, we are starting the development and the implementation and the adoption of this technology first for wellness applications. But interestingly, late last year and this year, we have uh, in certain way entered into other type of clinical level research. For example, Dr. Francois Helbert from the psychiatry department of the research hospital CHUM in Montreal, uh, they are using our technology, EEG technology, and DNA analysis in order to try to identify, uh, in, in order to identify from like a big population that, that will participate in their study, why some of them react strongly to cannabis and why do, some do not. So with our technology, they will quantify this acute, uh, you know, a, 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 let me call it in the wrong words, acute intoxicated psychoactive effects and non-intoxicated psychoactive effects. And then based on these objective and reliable analysis of uh, uh, 
you know, psychoactive experience, they will look back at their genetic profiles and, and try to see why some people at a genetic level are reacting in that way to cannabis or not. So that is one of the main applications of our technology, even beyond the commercial use for product innovators or cultivators. But then interestingly, Pam, uh, now that <laughs> Germany legalized the uh, cannabis, the, the legalization of cannabis in Germany is through medical, you know, the medical market. I met with with uh, some uh, you know German uh, Germans that are involved in the cannabis industry uh, in that kind of um, geographic area, and they were telling me about that. They they told me like even the recreational market is going through the medical avenue because it's the only way to date. So the exciting part is that now uh, we are in the process of implementing our wearable technology in clinics where health professionals will use it to track how they are responding to cannabis. And for example, if they are trying a, a specific cannabis oil for pain management, they want to find the right dose that may not create psychoactive effects, but will help them to manage pain, uh, uh, you know, in a more kind of a optimized uh, or, or desired way for some patients. Because not everyone wants to get high. They want to get all of these additional health benefits. So with our technology, we can help yes. them to prove these dose will not, will likely not create psychoactive effects, but will, you know, help you with pain and et cetera. Yeah, so, so I think that's just going to be huge in the medical community because we need to you know, for so many different reasons, I think it's, you're proving like the entourage effect, the effects of the entourage effect, and that's going to affect cultivation and it's going to affect medical research and everything. So it's it's very exciting. What are some of the challenges or limitations that you're facing with your technology? Are yeah, the, yeah, it's a great question, Pam. Uh, the biggest limitation is building the AI solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's because as I mentioned before, the 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 uh, to build AI that conducts this type of analysis without the need of a neurologist or neuroscientist. First, you need to build the databases that are that are scientifically uh, collected and that are you know reliably associated to all of these mental states that you want to target. So the biggest challenge for this technology has been building those databases. So, and, and that's the reason why the company, we started it in 2016 and we just commercialized the technology recently in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though by the end of this year, we will be able to characterize psychoactive relaxation energy or, uh, you know, these, uh, depression and, and anxiety, you know, there are so many other mental states that, or cognitive states that we would like to continue targeting. And, mm -hmm. and the challenge is how did you continue building these databases? Right. And uh, so, so, um, and then obviously how did you scientifically prove that your AI is working because I'm pretty sure you have heard everyone is building AI, but yeah, one of I, the biggest, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah. I, I'm, how are you proving this? I guess is, is exactly. So the biggest challenge is how did you prove that your AI is not biased to, to the yeah. way you label the data to train the algorithms. And then, and how did you prove that is commercially viable? Right. So, so that's, on, on one side, that's the uniqueness and the advantage that we have today, that we have insane amounts of data for more than 60 type of products, strains, vape, vape or oils. Uh, oh, yeah. I was just going to ask. So you're, you're, you're looking at all the different consumption methods. So you have so many categories, like a lexicon, I guess, of, exactly. of, of categories and genders. Yeah. And, and, and what about, um, uh, 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 Ex uh, frequent users versus non-frequent users. Is there any distinction there about Absolutely. what? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, 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 pretty clear. Like it. it's pretty clear to see that there is a significant uh, reduction or increase in tolerance with frequent consumers. We haven't got into, into it a lot, but 
it, it, the, I mean, it's it's not you know it, 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 it's not surprising to hear that exactly. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. The the I guess the novel aspect here is when you objectively quantify it and 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 prove it, and you apply that to the to this opportunity of customizing this you know or personalizing a specific dose for a specific product to a specific type of consumer. So I think uh, that that is kind of a. Um, um, the, the the opportunity there just, just uh, getting back to the point Pam uh, that has been the ch the challenge and that's why our vision is is a long term vision we believe that uh, in the exact same way it is very easy and straightforward to use blood tests saliva tests during test and breathalyzers to do some kind of human related research or investigation our mission is to make brainwave analysis as accessible to that other type of research uh, uh, tools. And the key to get there is to have developed a complete library of AI solutions that not only quantify these top five you know, mental states that I just mentioned, but many others, anger, fear, mm. PTSD, you know, oh. like, you know, there are so many other mental uh, states that can be detected and quantifying. And, you know, that's what we want to accomplish in the next, uh, you know, 10 years. PTSD. We need to solve PTSD, get the right formulation for our veterans. They're the ones suffering. I mean, that is huge. If you could find that formulation or the right entourage effect, that would be huge. Absolutely, wow. and 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 I think that the, the other you know potential you know and transformational event that could happen is that I'm not an expert in this field, so I might be wrong, but uh, but I have the impression that because we have never been able to quantify all of these you know emotional states and so many other cognitive states, there doesn't exist an accurate definition of what is what is. PTSD. Mm. What is PTSD? Like we have an abstract definition of it, but my perception, my belief, uh, uh, without being expert in that field, is that it's a blend of multiple states. Maybe you you have a you are so energized and but at the same time you cannot focus. But at the same time, maybe you are feeling anxious. You, you know what I mean? And yeah. I think that. Having built this full, uh, you know, library of AI solutions that characterize how you are feeling and and what you are experiencing will potentially help, you know, psychiatrists or psychologists to better determine and objectively if you are experiencing PTSD or not, because that's another big challenge today. They just ask, uh, you know, people filling these questionnaires. And I know that many are tricking them just to get the, those pills. It's very exciting, this field. And, and that's our mission in the next 10 years. Does do, do the local governments, does the Canadian government and the U.S. government um, recognize your or approve your technology as, um, you know, scientific evidence? And could it be used, you know, like in our case, we're going through the rescheduling, you know, federal rescheduling and proof and you know that it's scientifically backed and stuff like that is that something we could use if we had to and you know yes so two two quick points here one okay. uh, the, the technology has been proven to be way more reliable and complementary to instant saliva tests in order to better and more objectively determine impairment so i the challenge is that uh, you know uh, for certain reasons, cops haven't wanted to incorporate this technology into their, you know, investigation. And even if they want to, the complexity will be the the legislative changes that will need to happen at the, at the parliament level, at least yeah. in Canada, in order to approve them to use it for 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 these kind of cases. But the other one that I envision, Pam, and I'm really happy to share it with you because. I want to I want to leave evidence here that I believe that is coming sooner or later. There are there is there are good manufacturing practices today, right? Like the you know the governments 
in the States or in Canada, there are universal standards to develop, you know, to, pr to produce products with safety and quality, etc. But what about something that I am calling good, good formulation practices? In mm -hmm. other words, what this study that we conducted with the CBD products proved that one product is very effective. So one formulation is very effective and the other one is not. And I believe that it's a big problem in general. It's a complex problem and, and unmet a need that exists in the market for the consumer. Because in the end, the consumer looks at two products that claim, well, not claim, they have 50 milligrams of CBD, and that's the only piece of information that we are providing them to them in order to make a purchasing decision. Yes. But we are proving that that is not a reliable indicator, a indicator that a product will deliver an intended effect. So, and, and I, my, 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 to uh, regulate this aspect of measuring the efficacy of products because it was very know. expensive. Yeah, they didn't know. There didn't exist a scientific methodology and a, a standardized procedure to measure the efficacy of formulations. And that, yeah. is, that is the beauty that, of our AI-based analysis that is universal. No matter who you are and what you are testing is the exact same procedure and it has been proven to be accurate. So I, I believe that down the road, the governments will start regulating the, for, the development of these formulations and saying, well, you want to prove it? Sorry, you want to develop this product and take it to market? You need to prove to us the efficacy of these. If only we had that kind of over, you know, oversight, because it's amazing how many bad products, not even in the cannabis world, slip through the system and end up on the shelves. I mean, yeah. you know, like just bad manufacturing practices. It's, 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 um, you know, so besides the lab testing, but before they can even get to production, it should be proven. If you're going to make these claims, Maybe that goes through the marketing, you know, the... Exactly, Pam. And everything is connected. Yeah. That's why I believe that at a certain point will be uh, uh, regulated uh, because I think it will completely transform the best practices of running, in this case, a cannabis business. Yes. There, there will be a lot of value of implementing this type of testing internally so you can prove the efficacy of formulations and then you can leverage this scientific evidence in order to take it to market and position it. And finally, for the first time, being able to label products with science back product effect information that helps A, to reduce the saturated market with many that are not functional at all. And as, as, as a result, you know, as a brand, differentiate your brand and you uh, know, make it make it as successful as it deserves based on its efficacy, right? And I think that uh, to, just to let you know, Pam, that is what we have been help. That's the way we have been helping our existing clients. The challenge here is that um, the, the, our clients we have noticed that are really innovative and they are truly science driven. So they appreciate that and they are taking the initiative. The other challenge is that the governments are not aware of this huge problem and that now it's possible to solve it. So we're all trying to get up to speed here. So we have a lot, we have a, you know, but it's we're a long journey. It's exactly. a long journey. It's a long journey. For example, our relationship with Health Canada started two and a half years ago. So it took us two and a half years to share with them all the unique expertise that we have gained in order to in order to show them what is the value of our technology and why our technology is not necessarily clinical or medical, but also a research tool for the non-therapeutic world. And I believe that we we contributed to this initiative or this new regulatory research framework that Canada created or Health Canada created here in Canada, which has a, a specific model of research for non-therapeutic effects. 
So mm -hmm. for the first time, to the best of my knowledge, a, a federal organization recognized that cannabis creates non-therapeutic effects and that in order to characterize them or study them, you don't necessarily need to run a clinical trial. Mm -hmm. And I, that is game changing here in Canada because it's now opening up possibilities to conduct research. And in the States, I think right now the opportunity is that uh, using observational uh, research models in order to start doing this, which is what we started doing in 2018 before the existence of this uh, research framework. So anyways, I, I agree with you. It's a long journey. And mm -hmm. I think that the more we continue working with brands and research hospitals like Chum and, and clinics, et cetera, the government will pick up all of this knowledge and will realize that there is a better way to regulate how to take to market these cannabis products and overcome so many problems that are at the end of the day affecting the consumer. So are are you are you thinking or in the process of uh, maybe working with a, a research university? You know, like to, to to partner with a research university in neurology or how whatever I don't I'm not even sure where, but absolutely um, in the exact same way that we have partnered with with Chum, we are in the process of exploring other uh, you know partnerships or research collaborations. Yeah, with universities and other research hospitals. Uh, th their goal is not profit, uh, pro you know, profitable yeah. or anything like that. It's just merely better understanding the impact of cannabis on the brain. And that's exactly right. We are uh, collaborating with them and, and we continue looking forward to more opportunities. So if you know anyone and uh, we welcome the opportunity to explore the collaborations. Yeah, oh, please. Yeah, I, I definitely, because I think that they would really, um, you know, there's a few universities in the United States. I'm not sure in neurology, but, you know, I just was hearing someone from John Hopkins University. Uh, they're, you know, they're doing stuff. Um, I know they're focused on it. Um, that just comes to the top of my mind. I, I recently heard an interview from someone in their research department um, doing cannabis. So, um, so I guess to end up, how, 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 who are you looking to work with? I know you're in the medical community, you're in the brands. Um, how would somebody, uh, work with you if they were a brand um is it and it's is it costly to do this is it something they could do on their own would they hire you to come and like are, yeah. it, and why would why are they hiring you i know you mentioned pax uh, and right. so they're a flower brand vape brand or flower um, yeah exactly so so I guess the, the the value that we deliver to innovative cannabis brands it, is to, um, for example, in the States specifically, is to provide our wearable EEG technology and implement the research model that we have created here in Canada. And as I mentioned, that has been approved by Health Canada and independent research boards, so they can do their own research internally, like PAX uh, did, in order to do it in a more credible way because it's fully objective and it's the actual analysis of brain waves rather than concentrations levels of THC in, in, in body fluids. And more importantly, doing it in a more cost-effective way than running a clinical trial. So, so at the end of the day, uh, the biggest challenge that we heard from the industry is my only two options today are universities or contract research organizations. These CROs are insanely expensive. A hundred fifty thousand to a hundred fifty thousand dollar trial just for one or two products. So they told us like it's it's just not sustainable because I am constantly developing formulations, etc. And then on the other side is maybe you can uh, partner with a university, but the challenge with the university model is that it is so slow because they are dependent on research grant applications. So that project could take more than two years easily to, you know, to execute it, to conduct it and publish results, et cetera. So our unique offering is adopt our wearable EEG technology because it's objective. It's very fast to do. Within three months, we can conduct the studies with three or four products working together. And I'll tell you specifically how, how that works. 
but most importantly, it's very, it's very, very cost effective because we don't even sell them the technology because that is the expensive aspect. We just simply lease the technology and give them only unlimited uh, EEG analysis based on our library of AI solutions. So depending on how the volume of research they want to conduct, we determine the price, but it could be yeah, very, nice. very, very, very lean so they can start conducting their own research in their own labs. And the yeah. beauty of the beauty here is that they are leveraging their existing human resources. The researchers and scientists that are developing the products are the ones now leading the research internally. And they are using friends or employees to participate in the studies because now it's fully objective. You cannot trick your brain. Right. You cannot claim to feel high and then, you know, make your brain feel in it. I mean, if that happens, the cannabis industry is over. Just yeah. believe that you are high <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and exactly. you will feel high. So so that is uh, the, the value proposition here, uh, Pam. And, and the way, just quickly, the way it works is we give them the technology, which is the wearable device, the EEG amplifiers, computers, and we we strongly recommend to do an in-person training because which takes one or two days to show them what is the research methodology or protocol that they need to follow and and how they can adjust it based on their own research objectives and then they they now they are they are set for collecting eeg data very easily because of our software i am I didn't mention this, but I am, I, I am an engineering scientist. Uh, my, my background is in en software engineering, uh, but I have been uh, doing scientific research for 10 years. My, my vision always is to conduct scientific research that is reliable, but also always looking at commercial viability. Because mm -hmm. if you just, you know, you need to make it sustainable and viable and scalable for you know, kind of its brand. So, um, so now they are set to do this type of data collection in an agile way and internally. So all of that, you know, volume of expenses are basically, you know, avoided. And then they just send us the data and we process it and return the results. So, you know, technically within two weeks, we are constantly generating insights about the data that they are sharing with us. And when they told us, okay, perfect, the research is completed, I benchmark four new formulations and I found the best performing formulation, then we help them to write a scientific paper and publish it independently. So now they can back up their, their uh, announcements or public use of this data for educational or promotional purposes. Oh, okay. So they end up with like a white paper or something that exactly. Uh, okay, gotcha. And then how how is someone? I don't know if you can talk about this, but how is someone like Pax using it? So it's for their technology to say that vape technology is better than uh, oil. <laughs> so, I don't know. So I'll uh, like uh, I'll take another and I share with you their their press releases, etc. But Pax wanted to prove the entourage effect of their live rossing uh, formulation. So, oh, so that's right. They're producing products. I forgot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They have their own pots, right? Yeah, they, and, and they have these premium level pots, which are made out of live rosin and they have other pots that are just THC extracts. So we conducted this uh, study to prove what is the entourage effect uh, of the uh, live rosin pots of packs? And it was game changing for them because, and they, they prove that, you know, blending, you know, THC along with all the other cannabidiol and terpene and not who knows what other properties has the plant was way more effective at creating oh. that potent and the slash and entourage effect that if than if you only isolate THC alone, and that is helping them to justify to the client why the live rosin product is more expensive because it's more quality and more effective at creating that desired psychoactive experience. And now that's another thing that it could be uh, the technology could be used for is differentiating that all these different extraction methods coming out, you know 
fresh frozen rosin uh you know uh, uh, butter batter blah you know it's exactly like i can see an extension of this company which you might not even want to go down but where or where you could partner with is there's a lot of apps out there and they've been trying to come out for a couple of years and they are consumer apps that people can if you use this brand's gummy these are the effects you're going to get so they're trying to build their database built on actual cu customer experiences but that's not really enough you know it's not really getting it's not really determining what is the effects are um and there's a lot i know there was one in canada called um strain print and yes. they kept coming right kept coming out and then a lot of us ones are out i don't know how they're doing but you know i think it could be a good app but the the information has to be more um you know precise yeah exactly so just, and, just and, an idea absolutely but i mean and that was one of the uh, kind of a challenges that i was trying to share like you, you know what will be ideal these wearable devices for consumers put it on take your app and then we will do we will do a quick scan and we will know what type of consumer you are and then based on that I will ask you what type of experience you want to accomplish. And instead of giving you 1,000 alternatives in an e-commerce platform, I will just narrow down that to five or 10 options. So it is proven with this brain science that you will react in the way that you want to, to accomplish that experience. The right. challenge is, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to say, oh, get this specific product. You just have to say, find a product that has, you know, uh, myrcene, limonene, uh, you know, uh, two to one CBD, THC, and this will get you the effect. It doesn't have to be a specific product, but they need to find, they need to go to their dispensary and say, I'm looking for a two to one and I'm looking for these, these terpenes. Get as close as you can. That's the app that you could provide. Exactly. And we and know. we see, yeah, and we see that developing it down the road uh, yeah. to, to completely transform the e-commerce experience. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Yeah. Lots of stuff and, and very exciting. And maybe that is one of the biggest challenges I face as a founder and, you know, dreamer. Uh, well, not anymore dreamer, but, you know, like I am, I am, I am always envisioning so many applications of this. So, having patience and going step by step is the is the challenge here keeping under control the excitement so we just yeah. go step by step and as you mentioned also being patient with the regulators to catch yeah. up etc it just uh, takes time but we believe that there is something very exciting coming in in cannabis and 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 i think that what we are doing here it will ripple through the whole wellness and health market because the innovation that we are generating here it will we will ripple through the other markets and that is very exciting yeah thank you wow that's cool